Welcome to the episode two of the Coffee Man podcast. In last episode, we spoken a lot about baristas and brewers and all of these competitions, the impact they make for the industry. And of course, people that win these competitions, they are considered as a rock stars of the industry, which is amazing. However, often we forget the coffees they used, the, the farmers that have gone and they've taken a lot of risks in order to make these coffees as delicious as they are. And in my opinion, coffee farmers are the ones that are real heroes or the, or the rock stars of this industry as well. So I'm so happy and so privileged to be able to have two of these. And we all know, and we're gonna confirm that they are the true rock stars of the industry. Two amazing coffee producers, Julian, as well as Fernando. And Julian is the owner of Finca Immaculata very famous farm that we all love and that grow very famous and unique varietal Yuhinoris. They won uh, 2015 WBC. They've also won number one in 2021 WBC, number two and number three position in a barista competition, as well as number one in a Brewers Cup this year in Milan. So I'd love to introduce both of them and looking forward for another amazing chat with them. Thank you. Well, thank you thank very you, much, Mr. Sasa, for those kind words. Uh, very generous. Thank you. Uh, it was it was back in 2010 when my family, uh, wondering what we can do with our land that we had in Pichinde, that goes back to 1927, and uh, we used to spend the summers there. And we love that place very much. My mother arrived there in months and she was taken by the colonial path in a, in a horse. Uh, there was no roads, of course. And uh, so, so that, that place, you know, goes back almost, almost a hundred years close. Um, and we wanted to do something to give back to the community. And, uh, and uh, we had many ideas, forestry, poultry. Finally, we uh, find a friend from childhood, Camilo Merizalde, who told us about coffee. We, we come from, from an agro-industry family, a hundred years back also. Uh, our main activity has been the sugarcane industry and palm oil, uh, which is large-scale agriculture, very different from from fine agriculture like coffee. Um, we started with three varieties and one species. The varieties, Laurina, Sudan Rume, and Geisha. And the species was Eugenoides. Very rare, very strange. Uh, we didn't even know if it was gonna grow. Uh, uh, Camilo told us, let's, let's, let's put it in a greenhouse. Uh, the tree didn't like the greenhouse. We have to uncover it because it was, it was always dusty. It was always sick. It was always in terrible shape and, and lots of chemicals going into it. So we decided, okay, let's take the plastic up and the tree blossomed. Nice. Uh, after two years, like you said, lots of work, lots of, uh, it's a it's a whole adventure, and 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 I think you put it the right way. You know, it is so much effort to produce those beans, those cherries, and uh, and and usually we don't get any recognition. I I, yeah. I I agree with you. You know, it's it's like, you know, we pour so much so much work, so much hassle, yeah. and but but at the end, finally, after the the truly grow and and it was we had the first. Uh, uh, cherries and and they turn out very nice so flavors aromas were great uh, uh, so tell me was very surprised right yeah tell me julian um when did you taste you you've obviously started with a five hectares and then uh, in the meantime you wanted to scale up so you you purchased more land um, how much of coffee is in production at the moment? Like how much of land do you do you use to produce coffee? How many plants today? Yeah, yeah. how many plants today? Yeah. Uh, I think we have around 
a hundred thousand hundred thousand uh, plants trees okay. um, it could be plus or minus but it's around there okay and i wanted to also ask um when did you when you planted a coffee which was 2000 and what year did you start planting exactly 2010 2010 so first 2010. first season or first harvest or first picking was about 2013 2014 correct it was it was around no it was around 12 it was around yeah. 12 early 13 right and and that's when we began to have uh, the first cherries and yeah. and they turned out very nicely so very nice. exactly well, everybody was so and and this this is what I feel that this is where that story comes together because for the very first time I came to Colombia 2013 2014 and remember meeting meeting Camilo and you know I, I believe I I think I've judged Cup of Excellence that year and Camilo was telling me about this special project about the vision that um, you know you right. you have and and I remember going to the, for the farm to the farm for the very first time and I thought wow this you know You've taken so much risk. It's unbelievable amount of risk of putting, you know, even putting the Laurina in there, which back then not, not many people knew what Laurina is. Laurina is obviously very low. It's Arabica uh, varietal. It's a very low caffeine varietal. And, um, and it's very hard to grow. And I know that uh, in Immaculata, you had a lot of challenges making that coffee delicious. Which uh, yes. later on we're gonna talk with Fernando with his you know yes. amazing amazing Laurina, vision. Laurina and Eldi are the hardest to grow. Yeah, they are tough. They they really hassle in the beginning. And and you see the new uh, Laurina plants and the new LG plants, and they struggle a lot because there's been so many water and there's it's been so cold that the tree doesn't have the ambience to grow, doesn't have the surrounding. It's, it's, been, it's been very tough. So it delays, of course, the delay is very costly because you have to invest more money into, into the plantation and the, the, taking care of everything. And, uh, and, but, but we care, what we thought was, okay, we, let's plant 5.5 hectares. And the worst that can happen is that we end up with a with a forest of, of uh, trees, and if nothing happens, it's it's our place. We will have it. Uh, we have we'll have paths to uh, walk through them, and we will enjoy them very much. But something very special occurred. The taste. They they brought the the coffees to the lab, and and surprise. They was they were great coffees. Yeah. Great aromas, great flavors, very elegant. Since the beginning, it, it was it was incredible. Yeah. I didn't know nothing about coffee, yeah. so so to us it was very interesting that that we were hearing uh, celestial music. You know, let's talk a little bit about Sudan Rome. I'm happy. I'm glad you've touched that on. So my. As, as I mentioned, like my first impression of, of the farm was it, it's a very special place. You know, I remember that you all, all of these um, plants that you planted there, there was a reason. Uh, you know, you have your nitrogen fixes. So you, you've decided to have all of your shade plants to work with the nature rather than against the nature. And I found that inspiring. And I remember tasting your, your varietals back in 2014. I, could, I did not taste in 2014 Eugene Oris. It probably was not ready back then. And, uh, and I found Sudan Rome unbelievably sweet. Um, really, really sweet, really balanced coffee. At the time, I was looking for coffee for competition. Uh, but I also thought that, well, you know, this, this varietal needs a little bit more support with the processing. So, you know, started talking with Camilo and with all of you guys. And then um, and in the meantime, I was collaborating with the winemakers. So we thought, well, le let's do this new process with this Sudan Rome because we can complement that amazing sweetness that coffee has. We can highlight the terroir with the process. And, uh, and this was the first birthplace of very first carbonic maceration in the coffee worldwide, um, which... Um, you know, I, I, I enjoyed every moment collaborating, working with you. Um, it's some people that even 
kind of watch the presentation, they can see that little shade system that you were using because Sudan Rumei was kind of enjoying the shade at a time, but not necessarily you can notice. Um, and also talking about your irrigation system and everything else. Um, so um, in 2015, we obviously made a, made a big success. We won together World Barista Championships. And I wanted to, and of course that meant world for me. And for me, it was really important that we can celebrate that success together. So three months later, we, we flew to your farm and, um, and I lived one of the most special moments in my life when I could do my presentation and my proper run through on Las Nubes, which you've set up beautifully uh, on top of the mountain. You brought the machine, you brought a grinder, you brought everything. So I can actually do my WBC presentation to the people that have picked our coffees, you know, to, to you, your family and the farmers. And um, for me, it was a special yeah. feeling, a special so meaning. My family was there. Exactly, family your, your was entire there. family was there. So I'd love to kind of hear from you what it all meant for you back then, that win and also us coming and visiting you uh, place. And that very important special cupping that we had afterwards when, when I've tasted huge Kinoris for the first time as well. So if you can kind of maybe go back to these memories in 2015. Yeah, yeah I remember very well. We were. We located the home. We put the place together right in the uh, top of the, uh, the Finca Las Nubes, uh, very well decorated. We had, we had most of the family was there. It was a very special moment. You just have one that come the WBC. And you have become a personality. And uh, so it was very important for us to have you in Las Nubes and in Maculada. And uh, I had a lot of uh, testimonies that, that mentioned about all that we had there should be there some, somewhere, but, but it was a very special indeed. It was a very special indeed moment that, that we appreciate very much because you had a whole, a whole crew. I don't know, I think you had like 12 persons in, uh, coming. And so it was, it was quite a hassle. Uh, but it was very nice, and it was very nice because besides the family, the workers were there. Remember, yeah. all, all the all the all the people who had made it possible, all those all those uh, caretakers and, and and the people who have worked so hard bringing together these beautiful trees. And and for us, you know, we, we were new in this. We're still new. I mean, eleven years. It's it's new. When you go a hundred years back in, in a business, 11 years, it's, it's just, just beginning to understand how the terrain works and how the climate and how uh, the altitude, uh, the difference in, uh, between uh, day and night and, and, and all that makes a big difference. And, and so, so it was very important for us that, that you made it. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think what's happened is something amazing happened in these two days because we, we had everyone tasting all of your coffees. And then for the first time, we all tasted Yuhinoris. And I, I remember tasting that coffee and, and, and like tasting it for the first time, of course, blind. And I think, wow, what is this? This is crazy sweet. I've never tasted anything like this. And, and the first round, I scored this coffee really high. But then I came around the table and then, you know, flavors dropped, everything dropped. And it tasted like a sweet rice pudding or something like that. And, and to be honest, in that moment, I thought, oh, this is not good. I did not even score it. And we, we've dismissed it, you know, quite few of us. And uh, we, which is kind of disappointing that us as a coffee professionals, and I look at myself, I said, why, why did I react like that back then? Like at the end of the day, you've taken the risk for that species. You, you've kind of, you kept fighting with it. It was not working well in, a, in a one system, but then you put it elsewhere. You have a, such a small yield, like it's only 150 grams per tree, which is ridiculously low. So you, you had all the reasons to say, this might not work. Maybe, I, maybe, I don't, maybe I'm not gonna focus on this species. Maybe I'm just gonna move on and do something else. Um, so I'm, I'm very thankful to, you know, everything you've done for the, for the world of coffee, for all of us, that you, you kept your dream alive, you know, and you obviously after that, you know, we, 
you met Fernando, which we, we're going to love to talk, Fernando, because you joined, I think, the team uh, in 2016, is that right, to 2017? Um, and, uh, and maybe if we can use that opportunity that we can introduce you a little bit, your work, uh, but we can also continue with that UG, UG talk, like when you've tasted it for the first time, what did you feel? And, uh, and what things did you decide to do differently? Because that UG that I've tasted was a wash process, was not natural process back then. And it clearly did not, for at least how it was handled and how it was processed, it did not work. And, you know, a lot of amazing coffee professionals dismissed that coffee. Um, and, uh, and you, you know, when you joined the team, you, you've done some magic there to that species. So, Fernando, floor, floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it's a pleasure to join the project, as you said, in 2016, when I was a, a younger person, uh, maybe like a kid in, in certain way. And this kind of project kind of pushed me a lot because I knew the, the importance and I knew the trajectory that we had with you. So when I joined, I, I was very surprised with all the coffees. And Eugene, as you said, it was washed. That's a little bit of your background. Because you have a very... Oh, yeah, my background, I've been in coffee for 20 years. Uh, I started in Costa Coffee in the UK in 2000, in year 2000. I worked for the company eight years as a barista, as a manager, as a trainer. I came back to Colombia in 2009 um, because I had, I think, my time in London kind of passed. And I went to do something with coffee. I knew that I, that I could do something. But my experience was more like in, in terms of uh, making coffee. So I did some courses. I, I was a teacher at some time. Uh, but I realized that I didn't know anything about coffee. So I started going to the labs, to Cauca, to Huila, to Nariño, to understand where real coffee comes from. And in that journey, I ended up meeting Julian in 2016 after some years. Uh, I just came back from Costa Rica, actually, in, in that time. And um, I faced myself into these naturals that in Colombia 2016, not a lot of people were doing naturals. Yep. And the first time that I kept a natural from Immaculada, and I remember it was a Sudan Rome, mm -hmm. I was very surprised because I, I didn't see the intensity of flavor in any other coffee in terms of sweetness, in terms of complexity, maybe some aromatics, spices that I never found myself in. So for me, it was very challenging because I need to adapt myself to a whole new journey of a variety and the terroir. And of course, you know, this was there in the table too, but as, as I mentioned, for us, it was very difficult to judge you know, this in the beginning. And we could not highlight that, that uh, potential at that time. So, we decided to start experimenting and we just did the, the normal natural without fermentation and, and the coffee improved itself. I think that coffee, I think I remember putting that coffee to Dakota from Onyx um, in 2019, the, the first time. And he was really surprised about those pineapple and, and chocolate notes that we didn't find before. But of course, through processing, we understood that the potential could be higher. And then we started experimenting with longer fermentations. And then we ended up having this LG that tasted like Lulo, pineapple, granadine, that was super complex. I even had some floral notes. Acidity improved. And, and of course, sweetness has been there all the time. Mm -hmm. And the whole world, as well as Asa, I think, took some time to understand these species because we are only used to taste Arabicas. Yeah, absolutely. Well, for some people that are listening, that I'm, I'm sure everyone, like a lot of coffee professionals, know that Yuhinoris is actually, it's a different species. It's not Arabica. Uh, and some people that are not really into it, maybe into this world as deep as we are. Um, when, we, when we look at the varietals, like people can imagine your, your apples and you have all of these different colors of the apples that are different varietals of apples. So most of us that drink Arabica, like think of your different apples. You have your geisha, uh, you have your pacamara, and, and on and on and on. Um, so that all belongs to this apple family, right? <clears throat> but species is a step back. Steep species um, um, obviously belongs to Cafea, um, the, the family, or, 
and then um, and what that means is that Eugene Oris, it's it's actually Eugene Oris is you know when we compare when we put together Eugene Oris as well as a robusta, that's that's how we got Arabica. So it's a, it's a completely different species. But then when we look at Eugene Oris, it's it has very low amount of chlorogenic acidity. It has very low amount of caffeine. Um, so perception of sweetness is a lot higher. But when we look at Robusta, of course, we, you know, some people don't enjoy it because of that amount of bitterness and amount of chlorogenic acidity because it has you know, four times bigger amount of chlorogenic acidity comparing with UG, as well as um, three times more caffeine comparing with Arabica. So we have on one side this UG that's really gentle, really sweet, not much acidity, and then we have this Robusta that's got a lot of acidity, a lot of chlorogenic, and a lot of bitterness, and this is why we have that Arabica in the middle. Um, and, I, and I always say that when, we, when we're looking at the species and varietals, we can't really process them all the same way because they're very different. So we need to find that magical way how to get best out of UG, as you mentioned, how you can get you know, more acidity in that coffee because it does not necessarily have as much as the Arabica, so that requires, you know, a different way of processing and, you know, mastermind behind, uh, as well as, um, you know, how you can build these small flavors, because we know that as soon as we have a little bit more acidity in a coffee, the perception of flavor is also higher. Sure. And, um, but I, I remember when I, because I haven't tasted Yuji for a while, um, like since maybe between 2016 and 2018, I don't think I had a, I had a single cup of Yuji. I remember when I was in Boston and uh, tasting coffees of the top six finalists, and uh, wow. Julian was there in, in a you you were there in a crowd as well, and I, I believe your your son was there as well in a Boston. But I remember tasting yeah. uh, UG from Wojtek, and it was significantly improved. It was not the UG that I that I've tasted in 2016. It had. More sweetness, it had more flavor, it, it had hint of that passion fruit, not not a lot like now, but you obviously were, were working hard, practicing hard and going into that positive direction. That coffee was natural process. And soon as I've tasted it, I thought, wow, this, this is obviously unique coffee, but unlike before when I dismissed it, I said, this is now unbelievable potential to be, you know, most amazing espresso. Obviously made me excited to to get in touch with Julian straight away after Boston. We kept talking, we kept discussing. Uh, I've connected Hugh Kelly with you with you guys as well because we thought you know Hugh Kelly tasted it, he loved it, he found the potential into the coffee, and then I feel that together we started going on that journey. Hey, how do we how do we make UG taste better? Um, and it would be great if you can share your experiences when Hugh Kelly came to Immaculata. Uh, which I think was 2019, because I think Fernando and you, Kelly, you, you bonded, you, you two have a special bond. And uh, how that collaboration with us has sort of helped you to support you to maybe go, go a little bit deeper into the species. So, yeah, if you can maybe take us back to that 2019 when you started experimenting with the coffee a little bit more and the work you've done together well, with I, Kelly. I take it over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... When, when Hugh came, we already knew that there was a lot of potential, but we needed to dial that coffee into a point that was completely different to what we could think about. So, of course, uh, Hugh took a, a very different approach into kind of trying to ferment the coffee for a longer time and to use uh, carbonic maceration as the base. So we used seal tanks with bulbs we actually decided to put the coffee into a specific room in order to control temperature as well. And, and the result, of course, was amazing. And we could start seeing that the potential was already there. Um, of course, you was a very nice guy to me from, the, from day one. I, I think for me, he's one of the most important professionals in the business. He's a person that cares and that has a really wide knowledge about specialty coffee. And he shared that with us. And, and for us, it was very important to, to have that person around because you always learn from the people who come to, to us. You know, from you, Sasa, in, in the beginning, then we had Wojciech. We have many, many people that have come around. But I think 
uh, Hugh push himself and push us to to get that coffee to the point that we need it. And for me, it was a pleasure because, as you said, we we matched from day one. We we even met at my cafe in the morning. We had a coffee in the morning, and then we straight away brought something to eat and and jumped to to the farm. And we spent four days intensity intensively, sorry, uh, together. That that Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we had lunch with Julian on, on Sunday together. We were we were walking around the greenhouse and watching the algae. And, and, and so how, how those little beans produce that flavor that it was very kind of surprising for us. So yeah, I think that journey, I think for us, 2019 was a, was a year of change, was a year that changed the whole approach to the farm uh, because we knew that we had the terroir, we had the varieties, but we knew that processing was something that could push these coffees to the to the highest level, and that's exactly what we what we did. Yeah, absolutely. And it was a it was a huge effort. Like I have a, obviously Hugh started his campaign in 2019 with a competition, and all of the espressos that we tasted from um, lot 13, as we as you used to call it, uh, Eugenoris natural process, and we had all of these notes that you know coffee is crazy sweet, subtle passion fruit. A lot of chocolate, a lot of black tea, but then we also had kind of some sort of uh, notes where we would call like seaweed or maybe veggie notes. And then as you were walking more and more and refining your process, uh, we've noticed that in our notes, this, this veggie notes were disappearing. And, um, and mm-hmm. what, you know, what has been achieved within six to 12 months, I feel it's incredible because because even at the beginning, when uh, when we received your natural lot, and uh, we had some of the people in the company, they were saying, "Is is this what Hugh is gonna use?" Like they were kind of surprised. Like this coffee has a potential, but it's weed. Like it's not it's not good. Uh, but it it really comes down to your mind. Like you you need to believe in it. You know, Julian believed in it more than any of any of us. And and as I said in 2015, I did not believe in it. And for us, it was funny to have these conversations with with entire team in Ona Coffee to say, yeah, and this, this coffee is actually going to win Worlds. We were thinking that Hugh Kelly is going to win Worlds with it, but, you know, we're super pleased that coffee won Worlds. It doesn't matter who won at the end, uh, because we, are, we feel we, we're part of this. Uh, and we, we have, you know, not, not we, we invested emotionally in, into, into your farm and everything you have been doing from day one. Uh, but it was interesting to see that every time when you send us a new lot, there's less and less of these uh, negative notes in UG and more and more of the new notes that we have not tasted before. And uh, I could not, like, it was always fun to talk to you after you, you cup your coffees and say, oh my God, this lot is even better. And this lot is even better. And it just kept getting, uh, you know, I, I guess better and better and better in such a short, such a short period of time. And um, I kind of want to, Sort of you, let you. Me you of, uh, uh, let me add a, a little bit of uh, Hugh. Yeah, he's a, a he's a very special, very special guy. Uh, you didn't mention we had a great lunch at the country house at the round table. And we not only have great coffees, but we have great wines also. And we have this beautiful lunch, and he's very fun to be with. He's he's a, a great character. And it's a, it's a very interesting guy. And, and that's why he has been able to, to uh, go so far in this uh, coffee Olympics. <laughs> you know, now that you have worked really hard on a coffee uh, for, quite few, for quite few years, I'd love to understand a little bit what's the biggest challenge for you working with UG as the coffee producer. Um, when, we, when we consider the yield, production, Picking the cherries, fermenting these cherries, what are the hardest things? Because this UG cherry is like three, four times smaller than any other normal cherry. What are the, what are the challenges? Well, well, first of all, uh, three years ago, we decided to cut uh, chemicals. We decided to abandon all types of chemicals. So... Uh, In that process, we enter in the philosophy of the biodynamic agriculture. And uh, we believe 
that by abandoning those chemicals and going into a more natural, more organic process, we have been able to have a, a much, much better, a clean, uh, elegant, you know, complex coffees. All of all of them. And, and that's why you were telling me during our dinner in Milan that you have been seeing those coffees, not only LG, but all of them yeah. that are becoming more, more nicer, more cleaner and, uh, and more elegant, more complex. And we believe, and, I, and I'm pretty sure of that. Yeah. And when you go into this way of doing a, a, a clean, a clean uh, uh, agriculture, you understand that 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 bean is it's 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 in a in a its process is more natural, and and by that you're going to have a much natural taste and flavors, and and I think that that uh, we're just becoming better farmers uh, with finer details. Uh, our new drying system, which uh, you know, it's called the drying swivel carousel salon. So uh, we don't have now uh, greenhouses. We got salons for the drying of our coffees. And, and that gives you, you know, a different way of seeing things, how you pour the coffee into the African beds, how you treat the coffee. Uh, so Milan competition arrived you know, a month and a half ago now. And, um, and I remember we, we were having a dinner in Milan, as you mentioned, just before competition. Um, and we were talking, hey, how do, we, how do we make that perfect coffee? And you, you, were, telling, you were asking me, Sash, I want you to score my coffee 100 points, and how do we do that? Uh, now, a few days later, you Immaculata won number one, number two, number three in the barista competition. Uh, Immaculata won number one in the Brewers competition, obviously together in in a blend with um, Ecuador coffee, and uh, and having all of that in mind, Immaculata also won back in the days in 2015 competition. That you know together, what's happened is we've kind of brought this new carbonic maceration process in the world. How did that all makes you feel now? all of these great, great awards that you've done, despite all of the challenges that you had at the beginning with the farm? Well, yeah, well, it's, it's a very pleasant, uh, you know, s sitting there watching the last competition and having all those winners, it's, it's unbelievable. You don't, you don't what, what is this? And, uh, you know, Fernando was there, Jorge was there, my wife, Ana Maria was there. So we were, you know, we were very happy, of course, extremely happy. We were able to, to enjoy all of us and, and we were able to record some of those beautiful moments. And, and it's, it's, it's a way of, uh, you know, saying, hey, you guys, you, you did right. You did a great uh, project. And, and this is the way that we're saying to you, thank you. Uh, uh, you did a, 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 an extraordinary job, and, and so so uh, the tough part is how you do you keep the excellence in in the future because that's the tough part of it. So so we're improving, we're improving in every part of the of the process. And I remember, like when I was in the morning of competition, when I was talking to Hugh, and I said, you know, well, this is great thing. You know, you you know finals here. There's, uh, you know, there's Diego in the finals as well with Yuhi Noris Coffee. There's Andrea. You know, we made a small impact to motivate, you know, to motivate you guys so you can keep chasing the excellence. You can keep producing the best coffees. Um, so we, we felt privileged to be, to be part of this story. And we are actually privileged to be part of the Immaculata story for a very long time. Um, so question, fun, fun question. Fernando, maybe starting with you. If you can yeah. be a if you can be a coffee tree, varietal or the species, which one would you choose and why? <laughs> Fa whatever comes in your mind. For well, first of all, I, I want to kind of go just one minute back yeah. and congratulate Julian and and you as an ambassador, Sasa, because 
Julian took a risk that no many people would take because I think Julian is not in his kind of early days. He's already very experienced. And he wanted to prove himself into something that he didn't know. And, and for me, it was kind of a fair moment because, of course, when you won, we, we were learning. But I think yeah. winning with LG was more like a statement because we knew that this excellence could take us to this place. But in this point, we were, we're in a point where for us, it's like winning is the same like losing because we need to look back and think what's next. So it's a very challenging episode now. We're thinking, what are we going to do? Are we going to look for different species? Are we going to do some in genetic, genetics? Can we improve um, processing? So for us, it's a very challenging moment too. We, we, are not ha- we are very happy with the result, but we know that this is not the end. Yeah. Now answering your question. <laughs> I would like to be a mixture of LG and Geisha <laughs> because... <laughs> LG is something that every human being that tasted is like, what's this? You know, it's, it's like a shock. In, it's like a slap in your, in, your, in your face. But if I can drink a coffee every single day of my life, it will be like a natural geisha from Immaculada. Okay. So it's, it's a very ambiguous question. Uh, something that's very unique. And as some, some people say, beautiful things come in small uh, packets or, 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 or tins. And UG is like that. We, I can drink. I just drank an LG a couple of hours ago in the lab. And I was tasting this coffee and I was like, wow, this coffee took us to, to the highest level. Absolutely. But maybe tomorrow morning I'm going to drink a geisha because I feel very nice with the geisha. Nice. Too. So Julian, question for you. If you're going to... If you're going to be a coffee tree, like you have to be a coffee tree, you have no choice in your next life. <laughs> Uh, what coffee tree would you like to be? Well, that's that's a very interesting question. I I would say I would say it's a, it's a mixture of the of the low caffeine trees. I would go with uh, LG and Laurina. There we go. Those are so 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 great coffee. So uh, uh, the blend is so fine. The taste is so sweet. You are so and, uh, you're such a sweet man, right? That's why. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. Well, you know what? We I, I, there's a one more final question at the end, and I think I'm I'm happy that you both touched on it um, because you you make a success. You you it's it's amazing that you can celebrate this success as you are with you, your team, your people. Um, it's good that we take our time to enjoy this. But also after you enjoy it, then you, you kind of wonder what's next. What do we need to do? And I'm, I'm already, I'm happy that you guys are thinking what's next. And uh, I also want to ask you, do you see the vision for Eugenoris being grown on different farms in Colombia or being grown elsewhere? Or your vision is to have Eugenoris to be grown in the Maculada only? And another question, that's maybe, that's a question for Julian. Another question for Fernando, because you are very, you're a very technical man. Do you also see more different species coming to Immaculata? And you, do you think that's an advantage or you want to p- keep refining what you're doing now? But we'll start with Julian with your question, with you, Hinoris, well, and with your vision with that species. Thank you. Thank you very much for the question. I think it's a very interesting one. Uh, we don't know yet. We don't know. Let me, let me, let me, let me uh, go over for some time and see what's, what's going to be uh, the future and and how can we understand how is this project really going to go forward? Uh, as far as the other part of the question, the species, I think we should we should uh, do some more uh, research and development and, and new ones. I think that uh, we have a great terroir, we have a great spot. It's it's a perfect place to grow very interesting coffees and I and we, we think that we should take that advantage because uh, Sasa uh, to have those special places like like in in, 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 in the, on earth they're very few and indeed pitching day is one of them and 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 it was a surprise to us so so let's 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 uh, bring some new things I think we should we should 
thought forward and, and maybe we can do, you know, more advanced ideas and, and see how we can do things together. Of course, uh, okay. that's, I'm, I'm, yeah. we are, you know, we're, we're, we're small. We want to keep the, the farm that, that size so we can have very special, interesting coffees, interesting processes that we can be able to, to invest and, 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 and have the capacity to do it. So let's bring new varieties so we can bring coffee to a really next level of excellence. And Fernando, for you, what's more exciting? More different varietals or taking another risk like Julian took and, uh, and to keep looking for more different species? What's closer to your heart? Well, I think Eugenio just put, it up, put a point where people start scratching their heads and think, what's next? Yeah. And that will oblige people to think about species, think about looking for some crazy varieties that we don't know maybe even crossing. So yeah. I think the, the card is very open uh, for us. It's a big responsibility because we have been successful over the past seven, eight years since you, since you, uh, Sasa, and, and now with, with Diego, and, and of course all the success with Hugh, Andrea, and, and Matt Winton. And we have that question in mind too. So right. what's next for Imacula? Should we look for species? Should we start doing crossing? Should we start doing this and that? And, and that's something that, that will push us to, to kind of start a new area of, as Julian said, research and development that we are taking part in. I had this conversation with Julian on Friday that I, I wanted to be part of that. I think my, my, my job now is in a point where I want a, a bigger challenge and that challenge could be that, uh, research and development. And I'm more than happy to take it because I think we have to share this with the world and, and see how we have done things, what's the impact of the terroir, what's the impact of the variety, uh, what species do we have in the planet that we can kind of resurrect and, and retake. And this is a job that, that we're taking very happy. Uh, yeah. You have done a job with Liberica and I think Liberica has got a lot of potential too. Yeah, okay. So the question would be is baristas are gonna look for something that is very unique. And I think species are that door that can take us to a different level of taste. Yeah, I mean, you, um, to, to wrap it up, that's very well said. Um, I do, I do want to thank you both for today's conversation. It was, it was amazing to actually go back in time uh, and, uh, and even more amazing to be part of your, your beautiful story or taking a small part as well. Uh, but I, I think if to leave our listeners with, with something at the end is... Uh, the key word is belief. You know, Julian believed in, into, into his vision and his farm more than any, anyone. And even he believed in, a, in the species where majority of the coffee professionals did not. But you, you stuck with it and you, you designed your, your team and people around you that believed in your vision as well. And I believe this is where you are, why you are where you are today uh, of that, you know, crazy belief and taking a huge risk. And I, you know, I think you're going to continue with that vision and mission. You probably need to some, yeah. some time to well, celebrate. Yeah, that yeah you're, uh, exactly. You're <laughs> so, and, I, and exactly. And I think for, for anyone that, you know, and what you mentioned earlier, our, our baristas are going to look for the species. I, I think it, you, you need to believe that you can make that change as you did. And then baristas will come because once, once you build it, once you do something extraordinary, and, uh, and when you execute it, the, the whole world will come to you. And it's a perfect example to what's happened with Tima Colada because the entire world wants you, the entire world wants your coffees, and, um, and it's a great place to be. So in behalf of, I think, all of us coffee professionals, thank you for bringing Yuji to the world, to the level you did. Uh, you've definitely made a history, and um, hopefully in the next five or ten years, we can make another history together. So. It's been a pleasure. Thank you all. Bye-bye.